welcome to everyone who's live and of course those watching the replay as well. Uh, we've got a lunch and learn today. My name is Jackie Broman. I'm from TBA Law and we put on these guest webinars semi-regularly. Uh, and today I've got with us Mark Constable from Resolve It Now, uh, which is a mediation centre. And um, we quite often have people in disputes, of course, as a law firm, and it's our preference that we try and do a mediation as early as possible and try to resolve things without going to court. And of course, having good relationships with uh, businesses around the place that we can refer people to is the ideal. And Resolve It Now is a uh, business in regional Victoria in the outskirts of Melbourne. And um, Mark himself has really broad experience, which I think brings a lot as a mediator. So he's got a background in economics and marketing, education and performing arts, but he's also been working in family law mediation and family violence for a long time. He is a nationally accredited mediator, of course. He's also an accredited family dispute resolution practitioner, which you have to be for family law, both for parenting and property, uh, and also nationally accredited in the men's behavioural change facilitator. Is it a program? Yeah, that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. yeah. I'll so, talk about that. I'll talk myself up a bit later. Wonderful. <laughs> Thanks for the intro. Yes. No, welcome. And I'll just hand over to you and you can run through with your slides. What we'll do is allow people to ask questions in the Q&A. So um, it's not the chat function, guys. It's the Q&A function. Um, I'll watch those if there's something I can interrupt Mark with and ask at the time. But otherwise, we'll do those at the end. Uh, for those watching the replay, you won't get a chance to ask live questions. But, you, of course, um, you can contact me. Um, and I can pass questions on or Mark will have his contact details at the end. And um, for those who are live, I'll stop the recording at the end so you can ask any questions you have privately. They won't be on the recording and I'll allow you to speak and participate at that point. So handing over to you, Mark. Oh, thank you, Jackie. And thanks for the opportunity uh, to present. Hi, guys. How are you? Thanks for taking out your, your lunch time to see this. Yeah, that's right. Look, I'll talk a little bit about me later. But uh, that's what it, why is mediation better than court? So let's just get into it and rock and roll. So here's what you're going to learn. Well, I hope you do. I hope you, they're the takeaways for you. But uh, what actually mediation is, a lot of people hear about it, but what actually is it and what does it look like? How does it work? Who needs it? And is it actually the best option and what other options are there? And well, what do I do if I'm going through this time right now? Or what do we do next? How do we do it? So so that's kind of what I want you to take away from today, and hopefully you will. Okay. So I wonder, in putting this together, so why why is it so important right now? What why a talk like this? And uh, I, I've I've been doing this for ten years and attended ten, oh, nearly twelve actually. But it, it, it's like I have seen such a dramatic sur upsurge, and it's overwhelming the work. So I, I also work in a nonprofit sector and have done for ten years, and. Lead times have blown right out. And, and, and over the years, particularly around the COVID and throughout COVID and over COVID, people are just done, I find, and they're overwhelmed. Everyone's giving them advice. They don't know where to look uh, and they're exhausted by it. They're trying to manage the children, manage the grief, manage their situation. And there's a fear about the future. And I guess my role in that is to sort of hold, hold people's hand a bit and guide them through and say, it's a process, it's a step-by-step. COVID's had a massive deal, people trying at home to get through things. And certainly during that period, I think two things happened. It either brought people closer or exposed the fissures or the fractions that were in the relationship to begin with. And we've certainly seen an overwhelming uh, need for this type of service since then. And the financial climate, you know, it's interest rate city at the moment. And I think there's so many pressures on people and just doing it tough. They really are. And, and we all are. I mean, there's no, no exceptions. And uh, I think that's added this, to the stress. And you go, right, okay. Uh, services are at breaking point. So in Relationships Australia, for example, it's up to 10 weeks just to get an appointment. And then if you do that, then you wait for another 10 weeks if the other party responds. And then, you know, it's four months. 
it used to be like 10 weeks to wrap it all up. Now, now we're pushing out the four months and it's, it's full on. The thing about those services is that they're dealing with 60, 80, 90, 100 cases open at once, one mediator. And so it's, it's like it's relentless. It's nonstop. The beauty about working in private mediation area is that it's more one on one. It's more case management. Like you can keep coming back and, and it's a lot quicker. Uh, so you get seen and you get dealt with. And of course, the big kahuna is the fact the family court has changed uh, over the last couple of years, particularly. So they're pushing mediate, 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 because they recognize in its former glory that it was just too long and too expensive. And it was dragging people right through it. And it was taking a year, two years, and, and it was just intolerable for a lot of people. And so the and, and judges at the end of the day really only making final judgments in 10% of the cases, roughly. That's what they say. So, so in a couple of years ago, the family courts merged and they said, mediate, mediate, mediate. So you come to see someone like me. So I'm registered with the Attorney General. We try to work it out. Now, and we'll get to that later. But then I have this authority to issue a certificate and say, right, now, I'm the first port of call. I'm the gatekeeper to the family court, hopefully, with the lawyers. And let's keep you out of court as best we can because there ain't no happy place. We go, rightio. So the next step, if that doesn't work, a party might not want to play ball, it's not suitable, or they've just had a crack and decided we just want to go, we think we need the next step. They'll go to the next step. You don't get your day in court. You don't get in front of a judge these days. What it is, the registrar will be there. Bring your lawyers, get your barristers, let's mediate again. And you might walk away with an outcome, and we'll get to what are the costs around that and, and what, what, what's the stress and pressure of that. But the, the, they're going to say mediate, mediate, mediate. Because most cases shouldn't be in court. Most family cases shouldn't be in court. Yeah, so the court has changed and that's certainly uh, put a larger emphasis back on people such as ourselves. And of course, the client. Let's mediate. There is hope in that, in that model, I think. There's a lot more hope. Work together, you can do it. That's what they're saying. So that's why it's important right now. So who's this for, this sort of talk? Uh, we deal with all sorts of families, you know, uh, and grandparent cases and, and, and rainbow families and, and multicultural families. We deal with everything in that thing. But as people basically have separated or are planning to separate, and that's another topic I wouldn't mind talking about, but who are planning to separate. So we've come to this point. Or only one party is, is thinking of separating, want to want to know how do I go about it? What do I do? How do I get to this point? Well, both of you have. Or you have mediated or you have worked out a couple of agreements or you've done everything, but it's fallen off the wagon a bit. It's fallen off its track. So you want to you want to get back in co-parent. What does co-parenting look like? Maybe we've lost the connection, the thread, and maybe we can come back and, and have a conversation about that and mediate what needs to happen. Because what worked for little Billy at five, now Billy's nine or ten, has, is not no longer working. Our circumstances have changed. Other people are part of the picture. The kids have gotten older. Uh, or somebody who says, you know, it's just back and forth, tit for tat. It's argument after argument. It's just full on. And we're losing the thread of focusing back on the kids, where the kids should be at the centre. And that's just, unfortunately, is, is one of the outcomes when we're, you know, enmeshed in conflict. So it's people who have separated, had a crack or decide to come back. So we just want to get, a bit, you know, maybe it's like a coaching sort of service. or we just want to have a chat, have a conversation about our kids with, that, with somebody in the middle. And you might have a number of conversations and it's just to fine tune things as they move over, as they move on. At the end of the day, mediation and these sorts of processes are for people who need certainty, I reckon. That's what you're looking for. I might have a fear of, of outcomes. But if I have a degree of certainty, at least that fear is diminished. I need certainty as a parent. The kids need certainty. Who am I going to next? Whose place this time? Where am I going for holidays? Can I speak to you know, my mum or my dad? Et cetera, et cetera. They need to know what's going on. And so do you. Mediation can afford that, can offer that. And at the end of the day, really, it's the people just don't want to go to court. That's why you're here. I just don't want to go to court. I mean, it, it, it's too much money, it, 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 it's, it's relentless, takes up so much time. And I've, mm, I haven't walked, I've, I've attended court a lot of times over the years and not seen many people walk out going, that was a great day, I had a ball. Yeah, no, no, I'm coming back. Mm -mm, they don't do that, you know. And uh, you just don't want to go. 
I mean, it's, it's, it's not like, you know, Boston Legal. You know, Danny Crane isn't there, you know, like it's not LA law. And I think some people think that it's not Judge Judy in the middle. Uh, and that's not to, you know, make fun of it because it's a very serious issue. But if we can, if you cannot go there, because it's just, it lands and it stays with you for so long. It really does. And there's other options. So let's see what's next. Oh, sorry, it's a bit about me. Sorry, nice interruption. Hope you don't mind. Um, but, but look, I'm actually from the Macedon Rangers, uh, Hanging Rock, Miranda. Um, but so I'm in, I'm in the Macedon Rangers. I, I actually live in Wood End. Um, so I'm a local boy. And uh, so that's it. I'm a regional fella. You know, I'm actually originally from Newcastle. Don't hold that against me. But uh, this is where I live now. And I love it. It's great. I've never climbed that. I've walked up. Okay, so, but also, yeah, I am a Resolve Now Mediation. We're a three-piece band. Uh, I work with uh, two two ladies uh, who work, we've all worked, the three of us have worked together for eight years now. But Resolve Now, we're, we're a bit of a new outfit on the scene. We're, you know, about nearly 12 months old, six or 12 months old. Claire is my other business partner. She's actually a, a family lawyer specialist. So we bring that to it. And uh, she's also a very experienced mediator. And Verinda. She's also a very experienced mediator and, and a long experience in social work. She's a uh, she's of Indian background, so she speaks fluent Hindi and Punjab, which has been a really great asset in this work for us because we have a uh, work a lot with linguistically diverse communities. Um, yeah, so that's been a real buzz. Um, so we have an FDRP. That's what I am. FDRP. You know, it's a fancy term for mediator to be a family mediator, but that's a lot of qualifications and experience and practice. And I've been doing that for about ten years now. Yeah, and I'm registered with the Attorney General's Department because I've got to be, because uh, that gives me the authority uh, to sign a certificate 60I, which allows you to go to court. I hope I'm not going too fast. Um, I'll slow it down. Uh, so, yeah, so that's what, because you've got to see someone like me who's got that credential. Some lawyers do, some lawyers don't, but uh, I'm sitting in the middle and I'm impartial, right? So, and I'm nationally accredited as well. And that allows me to do other mediations besides family law mediations, which I've done. Could be the neighbor next door, you know, the trees kicking over, the roots are coming up. I want to build a fence or a small business dispute. Uh, so I've done a lot of those as well. So I've been at the coal face, which isn't bad for a Newcastle boy. Let me just say that quietly. But I, I, <laughs> my dad was a coal miner, by the way. Uh, it was a decade of experience at the coal face. So I've worked a lot. I hope you can't see that. Uh, I've worked a lot uh, in the Western suburbs. So uh, for the last 10 years, that's been my meat and potatoes. So I focus in the diverse communities, but there's a lot of family violence as well. I, I've had to deal with a lot of um, levels of abusive behaviour, alcoholism, drug, drug addictions. And it's certainly, certainly what I've seen a massive increase is mental health crises. And so that's really um, you know, made it a lot more difficult to mediate there's no doubt about that whilst there are a lot more services so I work in that sector so I've been right at the I haven't been working in queue I've been working there and uh it's hardcore there's no doubt about it and it's relentless and your heart just breaks at times and you just you just want to help people and I just it shouldn't be like this you never entered a marriage relationship thinking you'd be here and you go you can do this it just takes time and follow the process it takes a lot of other things too but uh so we've been there, uh, I've been doing that, and I've made that hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cases from all ranges, and there's a lot of, I think a lot of it's about managing grief, and I think that's right. You know, I, I see that a lot because it's like a death in the family, isn't it? Like we had these hopes and dreams, and now we're broken, and it has broken something inside you, and it's, it's hard. And I see a lot of tears. I see a lot of anger. And in a way, I'm, my role is to manage the conflict and broker a discussion between the parties and keep your focus on the future, not necessarily the past. Uh, I've worked in prisons. I've done a lot of work with men, guys in prison. I, I have ran a lot of teams and groups in family violence work. I've worked with um, men and women and the children a lot as a counsellor and as a practitioner. I've run the men's behavior change program which you may have heard about some courts make you go some courts don't uh, i've worked a lot with fellas in that over many years run many 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 groups uh, and that's that's challenging but exciting work for me so i've got an eclectic background yes it's true uh, i have an economics marketing degree and yes it's true i worked in the performing arts you might have guessed 
so I, I've had a, and I've lectured at unis and all sorts of things, you know. And anyway, <laughs> I'll tell you over a bit. But anyway, so uh, uh, that's what I do. It's a bit about me, a lot about me, really. Let's move on. So, so this is where you're at. I think that's right. Yeah. I, any guesses where that is? I went down Wai River, Wai River one time and oh my God, I'm going to take a photo. It's a good photo. So this is kind of where you're at, isn't it? It's like you've arrived, you've arrived in a sense. Uh, we're at separation. We're at the separation creek. We've arrived. What do we do now? What happens now? What does it look like for me? And I think it's important to identify and, and, and acknowledge that there's a lot of emotions, a lot of emotions in the room and a lot of emotions you're perhaps going through. You know, because it would be anger and, and you're overwhelmed. Um, optimistic some people are some people are determined some people are brave some people are resentful a lot of people are scared and I'm wondering if um, what, what you're going through because they're all real they are real these are all real emotions and valid and if you're feeling them everybody else is and also particularly the children and they're scared and we'll talk a bit more about that so I mean, I'd be interested to see what, what, what are some of the things you're feeling right now. If you wanted to share a couple of those and, we, you know, if you want to type those into the Q&A as some of the emotions you might be feeling, we can read those out because they may not all be here. Don't have to. Uh, did you see something there? Somebody just... Something Gary, there. yep. Gary says all of the above. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it's just overwhelming. It's like a, a tsunami on you and, and you don't know where to go. And we had this and now we're here. We didn't plan this. I didn't plan this. And it's magnified. It's amplified, particularly in the immediate post-separation period. I believe that uh, it's a difficult space to, to mediate when people have first broken up, but it's a space that I'm well experienced in is that, the person, you could see it like the person who's made the decision to leave, the leaver, perhaps, you could say has gone through it all. You know, all these feelings and it hasn't been going well and, 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 and the decision to leave. And then the person who's been left is in shock and is going through all the emotions now. And I've sat in so many mediations where one party, who the leaver, has said, it's fine. And that the person who's been left goes, I don't even recognize that person. Why are they so cool? Why are they so detached? And you go, because possibly they're further along in the grief cycle, in the cycle of grief, and you're just wearing it now. And that can become a very um, challenging space for both parties in a room and in mediation because there's so much emotion. And but if you're feeling so strong, so caught and so enmeshed in these emotions, then certainly seek professional help. And there's a plenty out there. Sometimes you have to wait a long time, but there are lines that you can call, uh, various helplines, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah. yeah but um, thanks, Gary. We've got another one. Somebody else shared that day, Jackie? Is there another? Big thing? question. What techniques do you use, Mark, to acknowledge the party's emotions in separation, but also realign them and try and get them to focus? on resolution, not soaking up the negative emotions and arguing about all the things that have happened before? Yeah, it's a very, very good question. It's, it depends on the, the, the particular case. It depends on what I've got in the room. And in the process of mediation, I, I, I've had something to do with both parties prior to getting there. So I ask those questions, find out what am I, what am I dealing with in the room so it doesn't derail. But it, it, there's often the white elephants in the room, that the unsaid what needs to be said, but mediation isn't counselling. And it might be helpful for some parties say, well, if I'm feeling so overwhelmed, that's going to cloud my judgment and that's going to be full on and we're not going to get anywhere. And because you can come up with 20 things that she doesn't do and she'll come up with 20 things that you don't do well. And, you know, it don't matter. That's an opinion. That's a view. It, the kids don't care. Kids don't care. They love you both, don't they? They didn't choose to separate. Parents did. And so it, it just depends on what's in the room. It's more fluid and mercurial than that, I think, than a set way. But I will always encourage parties. Sometimes you just got to get it out. 
That's true. That's true. Sometimes it's just out, but it's not a place to vent. You know, it's a place to focus on the present and the future. You can't change what's happened. You can only change what's in front of you, you know, and there's a real fear. So possibly I, I, I'll do a, a shuttle mediation, which means you're in separate rooms because I just want to focus that the kids need you to focus on the outcome. Or you might try a joint mediation where you're both together and then we go into private sessions. If it gets too much, we always have breaks. But the past equals blame. You focus on the past, it's all about blame. And that doesn't add up to a hill of beans at the point. You know, it, it, it's about how do we clear our space? And, you know, that's what mediation, let, we want to be the best version of ourselves. And I'm really hurting right now. And I, I, maybe you don't try and solve 10 things at once. Maybe you're only capable of getting one or two things knocked out in mediation rather than the whole box and die straight up. And I'm a great believer in that. Maybe rather than four hours, I'm just going to do two. That's And come back a bit later when you're a bit better. I've seen, I can't tell you, it, it just breaks your heart when you see people so distressed. And sometimes I've got to evaluate whether they will have the capacity to do mediation, to sit in that room or sit in separate rooms. And that's where sometimes a lawyer is very valuable because a lawyer can advocate for them and take that heat. But often as a mediator, I do, I do wear it. And sometimes you do have to get it out to a certain extent, but the space has to be safe. Space has to be safe. But if, if the emotions are so high, it, it affects our logic and our rationality and becomes an emotional argument and, and an outpouring and we get flooded and all hope is lost. You're not going to be able to focus on what is in the children's best interest or what you need to do in property or what the next steps look like. But I would assess that in the lead up process to the mediation. Now, certainly, you know, there's anxiety and et cetera, et cetera. Sometimes you might need a support person. I need, you know, my counsellor or my social worker or my best friend or, you know, not your new partner, but your best friend or something like that. So that might help your dad, your mum. If both parties agree to those sorts of things, that might be help. They don't act, play a role, but they just sit there maybe. Or you can go out and see them or if we do it on Zoom or whatever, yeah? So there's lots of things we talk about in, in setting it up to make sure that you're in the best position and yeah, I hope that answers the question somewhat, but I'm not a counsellor and, and, and mediation isn't counselling. It can be therapeutic, don't get me wrong, because I think, when was the last time you actually had a civil conversation about your kids? When was that? We go, oh, when was the last time? You, and, you know, I've had people in there ha have had a laugh and just shake their heads. And say, I can't remember when was the last time we laughed because I get the folk, let's be child-centred. Let's talk about, you know, Billy and Janie and, and all the gang, you know. Let's talk about what do they need right now. I know what you might want. I know what you might want. But I want to know what the kids need right now. And you might have different ideas about that. So, so you're separated. Reach separation creek. What do you do now? Well, you can work it out yourself. So a lot of people do. I know heaps of people who have. And that's great. It's not without its bumps and grinds. But they might work it out themselves and go, yeah, 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 okay, it's fairly amicable. And they probably pre-planted some people, you know. Uh, some people have, have been able to be have an amicable separation. It is possible to separate well. It just is. And, and I would certainly be a great advocate for that, advocate for that, to separate well as best you can. But it's not always, it's not always as simple as that. It's not a movie. And uh, it's very hard. It's really, really hard. I've seen... Oh, the whole spectrum of everything, I think. Oh, yeah, I couldn't write a book, and uh, I might. But anyway, you know, you, you can work it out by yourselves if you can. And it might be the pastor. Use their pastor. Their local pastor or, or you know, pastor, is it? Um, but, you know, like their uncle, their auntie, their best friend, or, you know, or you listen to somebody who's been through it and you might go to them, people you trust, you have confidence in. Because nobody wants to see you hurt. Your family, your friends, nobody wants to see that. Sometimes you've got to leave. Sometimes you've got to make those decisions for the sake of the children. It's just not working. Sake of my sanity. And sometimes there is opportunity in separation. It's not all doom and gloom. It could be the new starting point. But maybe you're not there yet. But eventually, many people I, I've seen utterly distraught, and 12 months later, they look back and they go, yeah, as hard as it was, I'm glad we did it. I've, I've been able to find myself again you know, I've been able to reclaim who I was I you know it's not about like hooking up with somebody else about it. it's just about 
gathering my confidence again and being who I was and being a really great dad, you know, or a great mum again. The kids, we're more present now with our kids. We're more available. We're not so consumed by all the problems we had. And, yeah, so th- th- I, I, there's opportunity in that, but not everybody can grab it. The other option is counselling. Before you separate, after separation, do should we separate, should we not? And counsellors are a great aspect, and I work with them a lot. And I've got a counselling background as well. I mean, you know, it's they're a great help. That's where you vent, work out what, what happened in the past to get you here, and then how are you going to manage your emotions and, 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 and strategize your emotions and navigate those sorts of things in the future? And you just regularly check in. You know, and it could be on counselling on your own or counselling together, counselling with the family, you know. And then, of course, you've always got the lawyers, you know, like the Jackie Brumans, or you know, and all her gang. And, and look, oh, look, I work a lot with lawyers. I don't have a law degree, unfortunately, but anyway, it's another thing. I went out with a lawyer for four or five years. She now lives in Scotland. Oh, well, anyway, um, uh, but... I work a lot with them and, and you go see lawyers and sometimes they say, we can work this out. We'll, we'll, we'll sort this out and, and, and that, or they will often refer, why don't you go see that, that, that joker in Wood End, you know, go see Mark or go see whoever to try and sort out, try and mediate, because they will say you need to mediate at first. The court will expect it and we don't want you to go to court. We might give you this advice. I always say, get your advice. Know what you're dealing with. Know where you stand. Know what your options are from that point of view. They'll always be there. And if it don't work out in mediation, and the lawyers might be in mediation, they might be there anyway, or they might not. Might not. And, uh, you know, but, yeah, I've built a relationship with lawyers because without them, we're lost, really. I think it's a big deal. And, and, but, you know, and then you come to me, mediators, and we're all, we're all different types of mediators, I suppose. Then, of course, if that don't work out, there's always court. Court ain't going away. Court, court, court's down the track if you need to, you know. But you don't want it to be going on for six months, 12 months, 18 months, 22 months, 24 months. You know, it, it's like court will tell you what to do. It won't tell you how. You still have to work that out. You still have to go through the process of separation and, and co-parenting. Court don't tell you, oh, yeah, you do this, you do that, done. What do I do now? What do I do now? You know, yeah, you've got to go do a mental behavior. You've got to go do post separation. You've got to do tuning into kids. Okay. Now what? And that's where we try to build a village around you. And that's what mediators talk about, whether it be lawyers, counselors, whatever. How do we get you there over a period of time? Court guys, see ya. Court don't care how you feel. Well, I could be wrong, but I don't think that. These are the facts, Jack. You know, like they don't care how you feel. But, 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 no buts about it. But in mediation, you get to talk, you get your voice heard. Hopefully, the other party will listen. But that's where I come in. Yeah. So that's what you do. These are your options. So, what is it? Oh, I've been banging on about it. Most of you know, but it's about the present and the future. Yeah. It's a discussion. It's talk therapy, perhaps, but it's, you know, it's more than that. It's, it's a conversation that you haven't had because you kept yelling at each other or you shut down, you froze, you were scared. You didn't know how to express yourself. You get overwhelmed. You know, I can't think straight. I need an answer now. Oh. In mediation, we can identify what you want to talk about. You guys set the agenda. You might want to talk about one thing or 10 things. And you set the pace, you know. So it's not about the past. Of course we've got to see what the past was to get us to this point. But it's like, let's allay the fear and focus on the future. And it could be about parenting. It could be about property. It could be either one. Often parenting comes before property because the children's the arrangements for the kids will may impact upon what the future needs are in property and the settlement. And in parenting, you can talk about the fortnightly arrangements, Christmas, Easter, birthdays, Mother's Day, Father's Day, who's allowed to attend, who doesn't. Can I go into state? Who's got the passports? Who can be present? Who can't? What schools are going to? See, the thing about the, the, the family law, it's based on this presumption called shared responsibility. It used to be called custody, I think, but now we call it shared responsibility. And that means that parents are supposed to share responsibility for the big decisions in life, education, health, welfare and well-being, and religion and culture. 
But the day-to-day -day things, whoever the kids are with look after that tend, tend to be. So your job is to make sure that the children's right to have a significant and substantial relationship and time with the other parent and significant other people, be it grandparents and that, your role is to facilitate that happening. That's called shared responsibility. Now, in mediation, I had a case recently where the only, the, the only topic was whether the young one goes to prep next year or the year after. That's it. They sort of had arrangements. They'd worked it out. That was the only one they couldn't agree on. So they went to mediation. We got an agreement. Great. Good work. I don't want to see you again, you know, because if I don't, that means it's working, you know. But, you know, they, they, they said, can we come back? Yeah, no worries. We can come back. How's it going? Because other issues will crop up. No, I, I, I don't think you can sit for four hours, make the, some of the biggest decisions in your life to do with your family and all done and dusted. Done. It's just not realistic for me anyway. And I've seen so many and I go, nah. And I don't know this. And I'm not there tomorrow. If you come back, I am. Yeah, it's, yeah. And it's all about the best interest of the children, right? That's what, that's what it really is about. What's in their best interest of the children? I know what you want. What do they need? What's going to work? What's going to work for a one-year-old as opposed to a five-year-old? And as their needs change? How's that? You know? A lot of people say, oh, I want 50-50 week on, week off. And, and the baby's three months. How's that going to work? So you find out what is sort of, what advice can I get? Legal advice, parenting advice. You know, there's lots of information out there of what is appropriate. But just because, just because one person says it doesn't mean it's true. It's, it's up to the parents to say, what will work for our baby? What will work for our children? You're the experts. It's also voluntary. You don't have to do it. You might end up in court if you don't, but it's voluntary. You don't have to. You can work it out. It's also confidential, the process. You don't sort of like uh, um, admissible in court is what I say. And I won't say what the other party said. I'll only share that the agenda is maybe the topics with permission, unless we're in mediation, of course. You know, I don't record the sessions. You might sometimes subpoena information, but that's a rare thing. But it's a confidential process. And what you say to me, unless there's risk, I'll keep it quiet. Or unless it massively impacts, but always challenge it, yeah? It's also safe. Like we're not meeting a public, you know, we're not meeting a coffee shop. It's safe. You can meet over Zoom or you can meet in, in rooms and it could be in separate rooms or same rooms with entrances and exits, et cetera. It is a safe, it's a safe place where you can feel perhaps validated. I've got a voice here, you know, and you've got someone steering the ship like me, yeah? So it's potentially a very safe space. And if it's not safe, I don't do it. I take that very seriously. It's a very important part of my job is to know that I've got a safe space to do this for people. Because, it, you know, emotions are high. I've worked in very high conflict matters and emotions are high. People storm out, get up and yell. They usually come back, calm down, because you just need to vent. Oh, might go out for a smoke. Okay, come back. You know, I found one client in the pub. I had to bring him back. Anyway, another story. <laughs> So I don't want to go on too much about it, but basically if you knock on the door and say, hey, Mark, I want to do this mediation caper, yeah? Oh, you know, Jackie referred me. Okay, then I'm going to have a chat to you and I'm going to book you in for an assessment. And that usually takes an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, right? And that's a long conversation where I ask you lots of questions. And, uh, and then we have a chat, find out what your hopes are, what's brought you here, what's the topics you want to discuss, any proposals so far, et cetera, et cetera. And then I'll invite the other party and give them a couple of weeks to respond. They get two two invites if I don't hear from the first one. I've got to do that. So I give them maybe a couple of weeks to respond. So, and then I do the same. They book in with me, I have an assessment. And then I decide if it's suitable or not to mediate. And if it is, what does mediation look like? Is it on Zoom, phone, face-to-face, -face, same room, separate rooms? What are the key topics we're going to discuss? You know, so, you know, uh, and as I said before, you set the agenda. You might want to talk about three things today and four things tomorrow. And we can do that. And you set the pace. You don't have to rush this stuff. As I said earlier, you really don't. You know, some people don't know I've got it because I've got to get this. Okay, well, we can discuss it at the time. You can have your lawyer with you or no lawyers. You can have a support person with you or no support people. We discuss that. The child's voice, oh, that's that's not his master's voice, but the child's voice. I mean, it, it's, uh, it's a big deal now. And I certainly uh, have ex experience and worked a lot with what they call child-inclusive practitioners. They're called CIP. They're consultants, child consultants, 
And the child doesn't sit in the mediation at all, right? But there is a process that we facilitate where the child with the parent's permission and it's past muster with the consultant that the kids might meet with the consultant and there'll be lots of questions. Say It's not therapy, but if you were to talk to your mum and dad, what would you like to say? What's working for you? What would you like to say to dad or mum? Those sorts of things. And they can inform the mediation. That's, uh, that's, that's been advocated a lot these days. And it's, it's not like court, like a family report being written or anything like that and charging 20 grand for the privilege. Uh, so, you know, so anyway, that's the child's voice can be heard. But there's a process involved. I can certainly talk about that. So why would you get it? Why would you do it? Why would you come to me or come to any mediator, really? I mean, any mediation process. Well, you, you get to be heard. And the fact is you own the outcome. You own the outcome. See, at court, you don't own the outcome. Somebody's given it to you. And you're forced to agree to it. Or, you know, you can agree together. You go, okay. But with someone like me, you own it. It's yours. It's not mine. They're your kids. And it's collaborative. Who else needs to be involved in this? Counselors, you know, coaches, financial advisors. And the fact is the court expect you to do it. As I said earlier, I've harped on about that. They need you to do mediation. You just got to try it. Either work it out together if you can't, mediate. And if you can't solve it there, we'll mediate in court. If we can't solve it there, you go all the way. Perhaps it'll take a couple of years and spend a fortune. The money could have been used in the kids' education, whatever. You know, and the fact is your kids need you to do it. I think I, I want my mum and dad to do it. I want my mum and dad not to be arguing. I don't want to feel anxious all the time. What can I say to mum? What can I say to dad? You know, your kids need you to do it. Be brave enough to step into the step into the, the ring. Not the boxing ring, but, you know, step into the ring to have a conversation with the other party, despite it all. My job is to manage it. Sometimes it goes off. Sometimes, it, most times it doesn't. We can calm it. Because you're the adults in the room. You're the adults. They're your babies. No one else's. The kids expect you to do it. Because I, I, want, I want people to be able to stand at their kids 21st. And I want that kid to go, that's my mum and dad. That's my mum and dad. You know, it was a little bit weird for a while. But there they are. And this is me today. And they're both standing in the same room. You want to celebrate those things. You know, you don't want your, you don't want the, the kid at school to go, uh, who do I go to first? You just don't. That splits them in two. That'll split them in two. You go, g'day, how are you? You don't have to be best mates, but you do have to step up the plate and co-parent together in some way, shape or form for your kid's benefit, you know? And we will try, we'll try, we'll try. And the kids need you to do it. But, you know, milestones, 18th birthdays, whatever it is, you know? Go to dinner with the first boyfriend, you know, that sort of girlfriend, whatever it is, yeah? So these are all the things. So I'm a great believer in collaboration. I really am, always have been. I take a team's approach. So I work a lot with lawyers and counsellors, I certainly know. But, you know, when it comes to property, not even property mediation, I just want to get my ducks in a row about finances. What do I do? Let's put you in touch with a financial advisor. Let's put you in touch with a mortgage broker. Get you some advice about where you can stand. And there's coaches. You know, the big thing I'm hearing a lot now is divorce coaches. Hmm. They might work. They could really work. That might be the option that you should pursue, not mediation. You might, I'll just get divorce coach. I'll find out what it is. It's always worth exploring. You know, there's lots of things. There could be a parenting coordinator, depending on the case, who helps you manage stuff after it. There's so much out there. You're going, oh, my God. I can't even remember what that bloke said that day. Well, ring me and I'll tell you. So, <laughs> I mean... And there's also, I'm in touch a lot with services. I've worked a lot with child protection, Victoria Police, Safe Steps, you know, men's groups. I've done a lot of that stuff. And so we, we build up referral bases. So, and they're a really important part of our, our, our fabric, as, as do lawyers. But uh, that's also, we can put you in touch with the right people at the right time, potentially. Right. My role is, I'll skip through this. I'm impartial. I'm not on anyone's team. I've told you that. I don't give legal advice. I say, go speak to Jackie. Go speak to Karen, Ivy, you know, go speak to them. They know what they're talking about. I write up. So what's the agreement you come up with? Well, it's called a parenting plan. It could be one page, 10 pages. It could be just about a few things or a lot of things. It's whatever you want in it, if you can agree. They're not legally binding, by the way. You know, some people, oh, it's not worth the paper it's written on. Well, it's a good faith agreement, isn't it? 
This is an investment. You're making an investment in the future. Let's do it in your kids. And if you end up in court, they'll look at it and go, well, that's a serious document. Might not be legally binding, but certainly reflected where you were at the time. What's wrong? You know, or you can get a change in the consent orders. You go to back to your lawyer and say, we'd like to turn this into a court order without going to court, thanks. And you can do that and get charged a fee for it. The other role is 60 I certificates, which I told you about. And they can say that one party didn't do mediation because the other party refused. One party, didn't, both parties didn't do mediation because we decided it wasn't suitable. Parties had a crack at it, made a real genuine effort, but they've decided to go to court. They last for 12 months. And people like me with that accreditation can only do it and the court will expect it. There's also in property, there's uh, genuine steps that parties have taken that pre-action procedures to get into court with regard to property. Um, they want you to try, try and mediate, mediate, mediate. And if you can't, then there's a whole list of steps that have to be done. Um, yeah, but they don't, you don't get a certificate. So why not court? Are we going okay for time, Jack? Mm, we are. <laughs> How much time have we got left? <laughs> okay. So why not court? I'll tell you why not, because that's what will happen. You'll get a decision, but you will not resolve the dispute. I think I mentioned that earlier. Absolutely spot on, I reckon. You won't resolve the dispute. They're not there tomorrow. You roll, you work it out. Because the dispute, it's not about, it's not a legal issue, you know. I'll get to that. So it's time. Court takes up so much time. You got to manage the kids. You got to go to court. You got to organize everybody around that. You got to take time off work. You got to take time to talk to the lawyers. You got to take time to fill out affidavits. You got to take time to do all this and that. And the kids go, Mom, Dad, Dad, Mom. You got to arrange the kids, school, pickups, drop offs, your own mental health, everything else going on, million people giving you advice. And then you go to court and they say, Oh, we're adjourned. And you got to go back. Oh, what? I've missed a whole day of work. What? I've been called in the various court matters over the years and I've waited a long time and, oh, we don't need you today, Mark. Oh, thanks. Okay, no problem. <laughs> thanks for the heads up. But I mean, that, that sort of thing, it just takes up time and it drags on, drags on. It, it fills every waking moment. God, how long do you have to do this for? And every conversation you have just keeps going on and on. And the narrative starts to change. The original story has now changed because it's been a year and you repeated it so often. I just want to get rid of it. I just want to free myself of this, move forward my life, take control of my life again. It takes time. And, of course, it costs you money, a lot of money. You know, you're paying for everybody. You know, mediation is not that expensive relative to everything else. But, you know, you get your lawyers, you pay a retainer, they'll charge you accordingly because that's what they do. They're experienced, they're professional, and you need them. And you come to mediation, <clears throat> excuse me, and you come to mediation, you won't pay as much, right? But I know well, lawyers I work like Jack and say, we want you to mediate. We don't want you to go to court. We don't want to just cost you a fortune because you can't afford it, you know? If you really can afford it, go to go Collins Street. Knock yourself out, you know, spend a fortune and go on. I'll tell you what, I ran into this bloke recently, this fella, and I mediated him years ago. And we had three or four mediations, actually, and it was hardcore. It was really hardcore. And uh, But we got through it, you know. They really committed to it. I had to shake it up, but they committed to it and they kept persevering. And they ended up with really good agreements, really good over the time, a couple of years. I ran into uh, the party the other week. How are you? God, that little one must be older now. What's happened to the other one? The other two? Uh, 100 grand in court. One of our kids doesn't talk to either of us and has gone to live with a, a family member. One, one kid has sided with one parent. And the little bloke is refusing to go and live with the other parent. It's 50-50. I said, didn't you have 50-50 in mediation? He goes, yeah. Now, for whatever reason, and I don't know, I didn't go into it. There could be a whole list of reasons for that. But I went, $100,000, man. He said, yeah. And, 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 and same, same with the other party. And I'm sure, you know, I just go, guys. But anyway, who knows? Who knows what's underneath that? But it just broke my heart. And when, you, when the kid's not talking to either parent, wow, where's their safe space? To leave because I can't handle this too much. It's too toxic. And the little fella, 
He only wants to live with one parent. Doesn't go to school, refuses to on a Friday. So that's a lot of pain. That's a lot of grief. What do we carry when we're older, when we grow up? What do we look back on? That's a lot of money. Save your bucks. Mediate. So it's relentless. It's just relentless. Like me, it's stressful. Stress. Every part of your physiology is affected by this, is it not? Look how much the, the conflict or, or the anxiety has affected you now. Sleepless nights. You know, maybe you're self-medicating. I don't know. And the kids get dragged into it at court. They just do. Oh, I don't want the kids involved. They are. You might get a family report. Wow. And it may not go the way you want. And often it doesn't. I've seen parties spend 20 grand on these things. And, and, and they both got flayed. Both of them got smacked. They were doing a really, really poor job. I told them that. But anyway, that's the way it rolls. Some, you know, court carries authority to tell you what. And I went, wow. They come back and we're sorting it out. But I mean, like, it, it's kids get dragged in, you get independent children's lawyer, and, and that might be the way to go. It might be the right way to go. I'm not telling you it's not. But certain cases expect it, demand it, need it. Most cases don't. You don't get your day in court. You don't. I've seen people try, <laughs> but you don't, you know? Because at the end of the day, most of the stuff is a relationship issue, not a legal issue. I've seen, I've, I've read some things from, from court judges saying, don't come into the court, sort it out. You guys can sort this out with your mediators and your lawyers and your counsellors. Sort it out. You don't need to be in court because a lot of this stuff is a relationship issue. You might disagree. And there's certainly a lot of cases need, need the, 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 uh, the legal. Absolutely, 100%. Couldn't agree more. But it's not always a legal issue. Majority of cases I see is a relationship issue. How do we work together and co-parent? How do we work, walk through this minefield so we take the heat off our kids? So the cost of conflict is a lot, isn't it? Because that's what you do, and that's my job, to manage conflicts. It's emotional, it's mental, it's physical, it's financial. It's the whole kick caboodle, and it consumes you. It does. How long has this been consuming you? How many years? How many months? What's the future going to look like? And you lose your sense of self, as I said earlier. You lose your identity. Who have I become? We lost our connection, our thread. What made us laugh? We don't laugh anymore. I can't remember the last time we hugged. What's happened? We just lost sight of each other. Life got in the way, perhaps. And you lose those you love. You lose the other party's parents who you love and their sisters and brothers and the aunties and the uncles and all the gatherings that were wonderful. And the kids lose cousins. And you might lose your best mates, your mutual circle of friends. And at the end of the day, we lose sight of what the kids actually need because we're so drowning. I'm not saying this is every case, trust me. But after you've done maybe a thousand or even more, I kind of reckon I know what I'm talking about because I've seen it in my room. I just want to hug everyone. Come on, man. You know, but I can't. <laughs> but you, you, know, you lose sight of what the kids need. And that's, that, you know, that's okay. That's where you're at. So it's kind of a reminder hey, come on. What are, the, what are these little, 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 little kids need for you? Yeah. Because we do. We're too busy. We're too caught up in our lives. We're too caught up with dealing with this stuff. And then what's the cost of the kids? They're scared. They're confused. They're anxious. They believe they're the cause. Maybe if I hadn't done this, that wouldn't have happened. You know, I had a case once about dots on socks, I call it. Socks had dots on them. And only the socks with dots on them would re return to one parent. The anxiety for those babies at changeover was extraordinary. School <laughs> and panicking because of, hurry up, hurry up, we've got to get to school. <laughs> oh, I've got to. <laughs> Had to find the dots on the socks. And when they didn't, all hell would break loose. Wow. It wasn't about the dots on socks. It was something else. It was underneath that feeling or that behaviour is a need. And that's what we could potentially explore in mediation. What's really going on here? What am I not hearing? You know, what's underneath this need? So, and they believe they shut down or they act out. 
I wonder how many people today are the children of separated parents. And you say, I'll never do that. I'll never go through that. I'll never put my kids through that. But you do. I see a lot of it. So you do. A lot of people don't want to. So, but I, don't, I'm, I feel like I'm out on my own. No, you're not. No, you're not. Let's try and get this shit back on deck. Might take a while, harder than some, but let's do it. You got to be committed and prepared to do it. But you know how many kids, you know, we see it in so much research, kids end up acting out when they're older. You know, they're on the drugs early, they're on the, on the grog, they're sexually promiscuous, they've got mental health issues, they're wagging school, and all hope is lost because they became so enmeshed in the conflict between the parents and they got lost. They become too scared. So what happens in kids during the conflict? They hide. They're too afraid to come out. They're not sure what to say to mum or dad or anyone else. They're not sure where to stand. Where do they stand? And they're not sure who to love. Do they have permission? Can I say I had a really good time? No. They all of a sudden become messengers or, or the counsellors to their parents. Or, you know, they become footballs. No. They're not, not sure where to go. And they carry it with them. Because kids don't remember how much time they spent with which parent as they're older. They remember the conflict. They carry the conflict. We all do. You could have a million good times. I mean, I think of, you know, my experience, I, but I can remember one or two arguments and they stay with me from being a little kid that I was witness to, but I had a million good times. But I remember that. It's not about time. A lot of kids in separation see themselves as a clock. We're arguing about time. Yeah. Oh, you're five minutes late for changeover. Um, boom, bang, bing, punished. You know, let's talk about those sorts of things. But don't listen to me. You've had enough of me. Listen to this. My mum and dad still fight now, but they fight over the phone and... um. Often I'm not in the room, but it makes me feel really upset and angry because, I mean, they're supposed to be my parents and instead they're behaving like two-year-olds. But they were always fighting. <laughs> and, um... It was just that they were fighting. And it, it was a... They didn't really care that I was there and I was listening. They were just in their own little bubble. Do you feel scared? Yeah, sometimes scared. And they're fighting and... Yeah. Yeah. Just scared that they'd, like, hurt each other or, like, mm. hurt one of us. Mm. Yeah, do something they'd regret. They're, like, trying to make you, like, love them the most, but you, like don't want to, you want to love each parent up the same. We were kind of caught in the middle and like it was really hard because mum would say bad things about dad to us that would like hurt our feelings because we respected him and stuff and then dad would say bad things about mum which was like the same. Yeah. It was hard because we just wanted them to get along and be friends. And... My mum found a new guy and um, my dad wasn't too happy so like if he was around, he'd drop me at the bottom of the driveway and make me walk up. And, like, you'd never say anything. You'd just go get out of the car and walk up. <laughs> so it's everything. Mm, heartbreaking. This is everything. Mm -hmm. I see kids who, who get anxious when the phone rings because they know mum and dad are going to have an argument. They get anxious when they're going to change over, just like that little fella. Mm. So your job, if you can do it, is try and work together to lighten their load. Lighten their load. So I've got you. You just go and be a kid. I've got you. It's adult issues. You, we're not pulling you into this. 
we'll work this out. Might be hard, but we'll work it out. We'll get there. You know, that's your job. So I would, you know, what could you do? You could explain. Let the kids know what's going on. Have that separation conversation. Oh, so many people, one parent tells you, they thought they were going to have a mutual conversation and, oh, and tell them it's not your fault. We both love you. It's just we've decided. And let them know what, what we think might happen. It's a tough conversation and it's an ongoing conversation. Don't leave them in the dark. Work out what you're going to say together. Don't turn into a, a conflict there. And there are, uh, uh, you know, I've coached people through those conversations, you know, in mediation, how you have them. What are you going to say? Okay. What if this happens? Okay. Ask him if they're having any questions. It's not their fault. And this is what it's going to look like. Everything's going to be different now. But, you know, we've got two homes. And it might be that, you know, there's a photo of mum besides the bed at dad's place and vice versa. And dad's got a photo of mum because that's what they need right now. You mightn't like it, but that's... That's what they need right now. You put your ego aside. You try to try your best to compartmentalize things. That's us. This is them. Be child-centered. You know, maybe the kids help out in writing up the calendar of changeover. You know, a color for dad, color for mum, color for holidays. Lots of different things we can do. You know, we can talk about. We're right Let on me... the hour now, Mark. Do you want to? Okay. I'm wrapping it up. Some questions. Yeah. Tell them that you love them. Don't take time to listen. Value their relationship with the other parent. Please do. It's okay. Don't be too hard on yourself and seek help for yourself if you need support. Talk to the professionals. Talk to their teachers. Most of all, be their safe harbour. At least one of you can be, preferably both. Both. Be a safe harbour. Let them come in to reset, repair, reheal, and then go out into the world again. That's your job. Be their safe harbour. Takeaways, let kids be kids. Let them be brave enough to find a path and free enough to enjoy the adventure. Let them be that, okay? Cheers. I hope that's okay. If you need to talk to us, you can ring the number, get in touch with Jackie, get me on that, whatever, whatever works. Jackie and the, and, and the gang can put you in front, but uh, ring up and say, oh, oh you know, if, if you call up in the next week, Say, oh, Mark, I heard you at the thing. Okay, I'll chat you for half hour for free and we can talk about a bit of a divorce action plan, what your plans might not be mediation, but uh, if you need to do that, say, yeah, I heard you. That'd be good to have a chat, Mark. No worries. And then we can talk about what your options are after that, but I won't charge you for it the first half hour. Is that cool? If you want, it's okay. Um, That's wonderful. I think it's important for them to know that um, not to self-select themselves out of mediation. And you've already said how many options there are in terms of short ones, um, online ones, um, just do one or two issues at once, come back in a couple of weeks and do more. Like it's it's a far cheaper um, solution than lawyers writing backwards and forwards with four-page letters. Um, because that doesn't narrow any issues. So, um, you know, I've spoken to you before about the fact that mediation and particularly as early as possible, the better. Um, yeah, well, we work and- on weekends. We work at night. We work on weekends. We get it. People need that, you know. Uh, we'll, knock, we'll knock it over and find everyone's on board within a couple of weeks, potentially. Mm. That's, what, that's usually our how it works out but you know not always but yeah certainly at least not 12 weeks <laughs> no that's right or you know six to eight months even to get a first hearing date <laughs> what are you supposed to do in that meantime that's right well it just gets worse and worse i just uh your heart breaks you know it, mm. it, it, it does no i guess that's the reason why i do this work because there's purpose behind it and you can't help everyone but you certainly try to help those who who are open to it and you mm. do your best and yeah. Yep. Sometimes that's all it takes, just a bit, a bit of guidance. Yes. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much. I'm going to actually end the recording there. So anyone who's watching the replay, uh, Mark's emails there on the screen. You can email myself as well um, and we can answer those questions. But I'm going to allow questions now for those who've attended live. I hope I can answer them.